Morning. Yep, it is still morning. I just had to check the clock. <laughs> uh, yeah, just. Um, I need to take some tools downstairs because I need to salvage some parts off a bike. Uh, that X-rated one. I'm going to be using as a part stoner for the mountain bike I've got up here. And uh, when I next go down, I'm going to take that down and go for a little spin on it. Tires look like they've held air. I did fix the tire light on that last night. Um, it was just a slightly weak earth connection or ground connection. Um, and to fix it, I just tightened the um, fixing bolt up on the light where it mounts to the mud guard. Just I hadn't done that quite tight enough. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be a working okay now. The brakes are, well, rear brake's still shit, but I've got one brake, that's all that matters. I daren't hit the front brake too hard, though, because I'll probably f um, fly over the handlebars on that one. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's ready. <laughs> it's... <laughs> Do it again. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, so it focuses on the light, sort of thing, this camera does. Uh, right. Fuck off, camera. Um, I've had a friend contact me. He's got a bike frame for me. And a bunch of bike bits. And I've been invited to their um, kids' barbecue next weekend, so. Yay! Barbecue! Um, I don't know whether I pop down to his and get those parts first. Or to go downstairs and get that. I think it's only the rear brake cable I'll need, I can't remember. Um, tell you what, I'll just turn the camera off and I'll swap these bikes around. Right, I've given it a quick look and uh, the gears on well, the grip shifts are moving fine so I should be able just to uh, readjust the gears. Actually I don't think I'm going to have to do anything with the front gears. Um, it really does seem that it's just flat front tyre Two new brake cables, because this one is uh, rather stuck in there, so I'll just uh, change that. And just because the brake cable is this rusty, I'll change that as well. Uh, I do believe the brake cable I've got on the um, parts donor downstairs will fit this. And if the bike frame my friend is going to give me is the one I'm thinking it is, um, that'll be a fixer-upper as well, just with a couple of wheels. So I've got a couple of wheels in the donor bike as well. In fact, I've got back wheel out in the suspension bike out front as well, so wheels shouldn't be a problem. In fact, I think I've got a couple of wheels up here as well. Um, these wheels aren't buckled, so... Uh, I've got my foot pump up here. I might just pump that front tyre up, see if it'll take air. See if it'll take air and stay up. But uh, yeah, aside from the um, um, seized brake cable, well they're not seized, they're just extremely stiff. I mean that was a, quite a pull to get that to there because it was, this bit was over here somewhere. Um, so you know, I'll clean up, yeah just basically clean, clean up as much of that rust off the forks as possible. I think this might be one of the easiest bikes I've come across. How loose is this? Might get away with just tightening them up. There's not too much play. Uh, I'll try and tighten them up. If that doesn't work, then I'll just have to redo them. Again, you know, I've got a donor bike downstairs with a good bottom bracket on it, so I'll just pinch the bearings out of it. Oh dear. 
Stretchy, stretchy. Right, um... I can hear a dove. <laughs> she sounds pretty close. I think I might have to go and, uh... Just take a dump before I do anything. What's this like? Is that all right? It's not too bad. I'm just going to undo the nut and just uh, rotate the handlebars that way a little bit. Someone's rotated them back. I guess that's just the position they liked. Because they're not loose. That is how they've been adjusted. What type of robe? Robe handlebar. Hmm, never heard of it. Heard of Mountain Ridge though. I might take those rusty bolts out of there. But to be honest, I've seen what actually I've fixed worse, to be honest. It's like the old jokes I see on these classic car groups I've taxed worse, I've MOT'd worse. <laughs> well, um, I can actually say I have fixed worse than this and sold it, so. I suppose to some people it's just, you know, a basket case and not worth it or, you know, just looks like a piece of junk. But to me, I don't know, I'll just see past all the bad points and see potential. Mm, I don't know if that'll clean up. I could cheat with a bit of black paint, I suppose. Rub it down with some steel. I can't find my bloody ball of steel wool. That wasn't in the shed. Now, have I done something daft and put it in here and forgot about it? Yep. <laughs> sure answer to that. Yep. Ow! Oh, my fingernail. I ain't got much, of, much in the way of fingernails, but I still managed to clip it. Right. Oh dear. Yeah. Oh, guess what I forgot to do Sunday night? Put my pie in the fridge, so I ain't gonna be no bloody good to eat now, is it? I'm not gonna risk it. Not a meat pie, anyway. So, uh, I'll put a bin bag in the bin. Well, I can find my roll of bin bags. Yeah, I know my kitchen's a shithole again. My flat never seems to stay tidy for longer than uh, a couple of days. <laughs> Right, okay. When I tip that downstairs, I've got to remember to salvage that jar out of there. I don't want it. Where the hell? Oh, they're over there. <laughs> right. I'm going to find out how long that is. Because my cousin needs a hundred foot of cable. I bet that's not far off. Just struck 12. Um, I think I might just pop down to my friends first before I do anything. Take my little trailer and some bungee cords. Push bike. Obviously. No. Nope. And my blunt ones. That's typical. One tether ones. Might take that foot pump. Well, actually, I will take that foot pump down. I'll just check the tires on the bike I'm going to use. There we go. <coughs> I used to just, you know, take the cables off properly by undoing the nuts and whatnot, but. Thanks to Biggles, I sort of realised it's a pointless effort if you're changing the cable. Well, actually, um, I watch RJ the Bike Guy on YouTube, and uh, he does exactly the same thing. If he's changing the cables, he just cuts them. So, yeah, I suppose if you're changing them or replacing them, it is pointless. Um, um, taken it off properly. I mean that cable I think would have still functioned but it's not going to look pretty is it? It's not going to look attractive. And how long would it last before that would have snapped anyway? You know the rust got all the way through and 
probably not long, so for the sake of a five minute job of putting another cable on, you might as well replace it. Oh, it's just got a light bracket on the front. Eww. Another light bracket to my collection. I'm probably thinking why. But, uh, you never know when you're going to come across a light that'll fit it. But I just nudged a... Yeah, you know, I thought I did nudge the... Yeah, you never know when you're going to find a light to fit that. Or a use for it. If I keep hold of it and I come across a light, then I can perhaps put the light on another bike or give it to a friend or something. Never know, I might actually have a light that fits it. <laughs> right. Yeah, the dragon has moved. The front gear is a little stiff to pull, so I might have to lubricate that cable a bit. And uh, those cables aren't too bad. I may just run some steel wool over that to clean it a bit. But for some reason, that brake cable was um, the worst. But the gear cables are fine. I don't think I'll put it up for a lot. I think it'll be like a... I might try it at 30 quid. We'll probably get 25 for the seat is actually in good nick on this. It's not torn or anything. I'll undo that bit. It's a quick release I'm trying to sort out next. It's pointing too far outwards, so. Good. Seat's not seized in. That's a good thing. I don't like selling a bike with a seized in seat post on account of if the new owner wants to uh, raise, lower the seat, whatever, they can't. Um, well, there is methods to get the damn posts out, but on a frame like this, if it was seized in, then I probably wouldn't bother. And it, 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 uh, I don't think this has actually been standing for very long, to be honest. I bet that tire's punctured, and that's probably what, um, why it got stood up. Um, the only reason I say it probably hasn't been stood for very long is because it's not actually covered in that much rust. The usual spots, like this, which I may dab some black paint in. I've got the tin of black paint, I might as well make use of it. I could do that again later today and uh, let it dry overnight. Taramo T1. What's it got on the back here? Designed in the UK. I don't know why they say designed in the UK, because it's just based on your bog standard mountain bike. <laughs> You know, there's no, I don't see no special features on this. It's got this bog standard V brakes, bog standard grip shift gears. I don't know if they're Shimano. Does it say on the trailer? Nope, it seems to be a nondescript gear system, so. <laughs> crank that looks like an alloy crank, but is actually covered in plastic. <clears throat> you know, box standard alloy wheels. Yeah, I don't really see what. <laughs> Designed in the UK, more like ripped off from another bike company in the UK. I think that would be a bad description. We've just permanently borrowed someone else's design. <laughs> oh dear. It's got an Apollo seat on it as well. But this isn't an Apollo bike, it is actually Mountain Ridge, so someone's put a new seat on this. That's not a problem, you know, it's, like I said, it's not actually um, in bad nick. This would have been worth it even if it was just a parts bike, to be honest, because there is quite a few decent parts on this. But like I said, the rest of the bike's there. <laughs> Might as well, have, well, if it was me and I was, you know, the manager down at that recycle centre, I think I'd have just thrown them in the fucking scrap bin. I wouldn't have bothered. Because I just was. 
There was literally several there that just weren't even worth parts, let alone anything else. But yeah, as my buddy Biggles would say, it'll go again. It's still got life in it. I'll take that stupid fucking bell off. I hate these modern bells, I don't like them. Because this bit always breaks. In fact, I've just gone and broke it. No, I haven't. Yeah, I have. <laughs> I don't know, don't care. It looks horrible, it's rusted, it's coming off. <sighs> I prefer the old fashioned style bells like my um, German folder bikes got. They're louder for stars. And they're much more reliable. Anyway, I've rattled on long enough, I think. I'm going to turn the camera off. Yeah, it needs a bit of a charge, so I'll do that and uh, I'll come back probably this evening by the time I'm done uh, fuck shitting around and whatnot. Yummy! I've had Chinese for tea. I haven't had Chinese for a while. Uh, anyway, the only problem I have with Chinese is. It's so filling. And no, I didn't just have chips and a pot of sweet and sour sauce. I've uh, I got a bag of chicken balls as well. I don't know why they call them chicken balls, because they don't look like balls to me, but that's what they call them. But uh, yeah, I get this, um, it's a place in town called The Great Wall. And that's where I got this from, so what I'm going to do Put those in the fridge, the sauce in the fridge, and uh, those will end up going in the bin. <laughs> oh, this is the other one in town. This isn't a bad one either, Jade Garden. I might actually start going in there again, to be honest. I haven't been in there for yonks. Let's see if I can decide which one's actually better, Great Wall or Jade Garden. Jade Garden's a bit further to go to, but I might compare prices as well. This just cost me £6.50. But for your £6.50, you do get. I can't remember how many balls, I think it's 10 or something like that. <clears throat> Pardon me, the chips and a big old pot of sauce, so. It's definitely value for money. Um, anyway, that's typical. I've put the camera on, now I need to go take a shit. <laughs> but first, I didn't actually bring the bike parts and the bike frame back from the friends on the count of I couldn't get them on my trailer. Uh, once I've made some room in that area there, you'll see why. <laughs> I've still got to go and empty my trailer and I've got... Um, I'm just trying to think. One... Two, three. There's at least five full containers on there of random stuff. Because, uh, well, actually, I'll tell you what, I'm not going to get into that story just yet. I'll go to the bathroom and drop a load, and uh, then I'll come back. I'm sweating. <laughs> I guess I've got my shirt off because I am literally sweating. <laughs> right, I'm actually going to have to open some windows. Ooh. Right. Well, there's a way I've got an area clear in here. I've already got the boxes up here on the landing because uh, someone rang my door buzzer and they rang all the neighbours' door buzzers as well. I'm presuming um, they were looking for someone in the box specifically, but didn't know which door buzzer to press. Because uh, the lady on the floor below me was um, talking to someone at the main door. Uh, anyway, so yeah, because I didn't know if it was a malicious ring of the door buzzers, which has happened rarely, but it has happened. Um, I decided to go down and empty the trailer, just in case. And it's Saturday night and I didn't really want to um, leave a trailer full of stuff out there for too long. 
I know it's out back, it's hidden up and whatnot, but uh, you don't know who's going to go poking around. It only takes someone being curious. You know, a bored thief looking for something you don't know. Um, anyway, what was I talking about before I turned the camera off? Oh, yes. Um, well, you know, my friend has just moved in with his girlfriend. You know, I've mentioned that, I don't know how many videos back now. Um, and I got a load of stuff from him when he sorted out his old place, his flat. Um, well, the original plan was to move his big old sort of workshop come shed to his girlfriend's, but uh, the thing is, the neighbours on the estate didn't take kindly to it. Um, they just called it an eyesore. To me it wasn't, it didn't look that bad. Neither to mum, but... Um, so, we were pretty much forced to demolish that, literally. Um, well, if we didn't do it voluntarily, we can guarantee the council would have. Um, and some people said they didn't like it because it was on land they acquired and not their actual garden. Um, so I think the fact that if that's the case then they were calling it an eyesore would just to be nasty really I think instead of, you know, if something bothers you just say the truth. If you think it shouldn't be there because it shouldn't be on land that's not you know because it's on common land and you can but believe it or not you can claim common land because um, quite frankly they did call I think I've mentioned this in videos past as well they contacted the local council to buy the land they didn't want to claim ownership of it so they contacted the highways agency, which cuts the grass on common land. They didn't want to take um, ownership of the land and didn't want to know, so... And um, their neighbours had the same thing when they inquired about it, so... They just stuck a fence up. That's what the neighbours did. Um, the only mistake I think my friend made was that they didn't get planning permission for the fence. Which, to be fair... I didn't even think you'd need planning permission for a bloody fence to border a garden, but apparently you do. I suppose it's just to make sure you don't put something stupid up as a fence. Um, but we didn't. It's just a normal concrete post and wooden fence panel fence. No, it's not a home-built fence. It is a purpose-made fence that he went out and bought. Or rather, his other half did. Uh but they have no file for planning consent for that. But uh, anyway, going back to the shed, he went and bought one. You know, pre-built one and put it on the actual garden that came with the house, so no one could complain. But, because it's like... I would say it's probably about four times smaller than what his original workshop was. He can't get all his gear into it. Uh, so he's... Today he got rather ruthless, actually. I mean, he did have a little part-time job putting together cabinets and things for a charity shop. And uh, when they stopped doing that and got rid of the warehouse, he came home with boxes and boxes of hinges, screws, the little wooden dowels and I don't know, fuck knows what else. And uh, yeah, he's basically sorted through. He's kept a bunch of screws and nuts and bolts and things for himself, that he could be bothered to sort through and, you know, take. What are you doing? <laughs> um, so yeah, he needs to make some room. So, uh, I've got boxes of crap as well now, but it is... Well, because I couldn't be bothered again to sort through all the bags and stuff to get all the screws out while I was there because it's too time consuming. I just threw them all into tubs and boxes and things that he didn't want and brought them home. There's actually a wooden box still at his along with all the bike parts and the bike frame that um, I've got to bring home. And a leaf blower. Don't ask. <laughs> 
I just watered the leaf blower because it's got an engine on it, so it's the same reason I've got the strimmer down in the shed, you know, I've got no garden, but I'm, I'll probably take the leaf blower out to mum's, to be honest, that'll be more use there than here, if it works, I don't know if it works, it'll be something for me to play with over there in the workshop. So yeah, a busy day. Uh, he just wants me to wire up the um, lighting and whatnot. And that reminds me, he's got a fluorescent light for me as well. Another, a dinky, oh, I'll just hit the zoom. A little dinky one, like I've got under that shelf. I don't really need it, but I'm sure I can find a use for it. Perhaps stick it up under that one. Um, but fluorescent lights are not good for Lego, which is why I'm actually ra getting rather desperate to get rid of the one up there. And I'll... Well, actually, if the tubes weren't so much, I'd have got an LED tube for the fluorescent light I've already got. Um, up on that shelf. I think it's that one. One of them shelves up on that wall. It's hard to see because the, the, the screen's a mirror image, so... I've got to remember that my hand's got to do the opposite. So, yeah. Tomorrow is, hopefully, a day over at Mum's. I would like to go to the um, recycle centre and uh, see if there's anything there. I don't care if I find at least one bike, that'll do. Uh, I've got a decision to make as well now. This bike frame I've got, there's a bit of a story behind it actually. I found it a few years ago, abandoned at the town's skate park. park. No brakes, no nothing on it, it just had basically the wheels, that was it. So uh, I bought it home, fixed it up, sold it to a lad in town, who's actually, re he recently bought another one from me, and uh, about two months ago, he had it stolen. And uh, my friend actually found it abandoned, not far from where he is living, actually. So I took it back. It was damaged. All the rear derailleur mech, or gear mech, whatever you want to call it, um, had, was all bent and snapped off. Uh, so I've got to put a new one of those on and a new chain. Because my friend has pinched the chain as well. <laughs> I don't matter. I've got a spares bike downstairs. So. But I used to use it as a trailer bike till I decided to sell it to um, the guy that had it stolen from him. <laughs> so I've now got it back. So I don't know whether to use that one as a trailer bike and sell my other trailer bike, the one that I built up, or sell them both. Cause I'd could sell them both, I'd, but then again, if I sell them both, I haven't got anything to tow the trailer out front, and uh, it's getting to the point where I really could do with being able to tow that one. Uh, so full of bloody scrap at the minute that I don't know what to friggin' do with it. I'll see how I feel tomorrow and I might load it up into Mum's car and take it to the recycling centre. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do in a, uh, in a minute, turn this off, go drag those tubs in here because I have three of them are heavy. Uh, one of them is just pretty much full of screws, that's all it's full of. So uh, I'm just going to take a long while to sort that out. I may need a bigger screw pot than the one I've got. But uh, it's not a bad thing because I'm actually running out of um, a variety of screws I like to use. Uh, when I keep building these Lego tables and whatnot, I need screws. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> and there's washers and nuts and bolts, and I don't know. Actually, no, I don't think there's any bolts, but there is some nuts there. I've got to sort out, so. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Anyway, I'm going to go bring them in. Didn't get a chance to put my video up last night, so I'm doing it tonight, and this one will go up tomorrow night. That's not a bad thing, because I don't often put them up at weekends, so... 
anyway, that's just uh, rendering, saving, whatever. Here we go. <laughs> this little red tub here is pretty much just full of screws and crap. There's nothing really of interest to show you in there. I'm going to sit on the floor. Yeah. But like I said, when he finished at that charity shop's warehouse, because they, they closed it down in the end, he stopped doing that side of it. Um, he just came home with boxes and boxes of stuff like this and brackets and in fact I've probably got brackets and spanner for the furniture. I've got loads of things like this in here and hexagon keys that come with all the flat pack furniture. Because that's all it was, was just flat pack furniture. Stick your back pad. I'm going to keep things like this because they're handy. But yeah, I've literally got to go through this and basically sort out all these... Um, that's what I want. I want a self tap of screws. I'm not fussed about dowels. There's a caster. Might come in useful for something. <laughs> I think this tub is pretty much the same, although I did keep some of these brackets. I've actually got quite a few of these because I thought if I'm going to be building trikes, that might come in handy as brackets for something, but I've got you know, bags of screws, hinges as well, I don't really want the hinges, I just want, again, the screws out of it, again, I've got shitloads of these sorts of brackets, some string, you never know when you want to need to fill something with a little syringe, so, <laughs> big brackets, there's quite a bit of weight in those alone. Plug. I'll take those to mum. She's always saying she wants hooks on doors and things, so I'll be more used to her than me. Oh, I don't know these were in here. I think I just picked the tub up as it was and just threw some crap in that top. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, there's a hexagon key. I'm going to find loads of these in here. Oh, okay. Might as well get ahead and empty the bags out. Gotta go through the boxes anyway, so... Because <sighs> I will just tip the boxes out and then sort them into piles, you know. Screws, nuts, washers, etc. Uh, yeah. And a bunch of empty tubs, because... Uh, I'm actually in the need of some tubs. I've got use for this one. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because uh, my tub that contains all my bicycle derailleurs and things is on the verge of completely collapsing and falling into a million and one pieces. So that's a sturdier tub. So when I've got that one emptied, I plan to uh, <clears throat> put them all in that. But that's quite heavy. That one and that one are probably the more interesting boxes, so let's see if I can't just slide these out of the way. Not easily, because they're fucking heavy. That one not so much, but that really is heavy. I'm actually surprised he didn't want to keep that tub, because that's a good tub. Hang on a minute, I need two hands for this. Right, I'm just going to put you on my hand. Yes, that is a motorcycle headlamp. Brand new that he was throwing out. I have no idea why. I have no idea what I'm going to fucking do with it, to be honest, either. Well, I think it's a motorbike headlight. There is no um, parking light in there. It just looks like it's the main bulb. Uh, there ain't even any high beam, low beam light to it, either. It's just that one was, so it earths out on the frame, obviously. I don't know, I was thinking of eBaying it. Better than letting it um, be thrown away, isn't it? Same with this. What? It's one of these sort of light fittings. There's meant to be a lamp holder on the end of that. That was up on my ceiling originally. Until I got bored with it. That's a hook that came off my bungee thing. Um, bicycle light. <laughs> 
that'll actually match the rear one I've got on my rally bike. We got another bicycle light. Now I don't know if he's already thrown it out, but you did have the front one for that as well. Repair kit, well, it's got some patches in it anyway. A battery for the Bosch drill, so I've actually got two batteries for that now, that's handy. Uh, a few electrical bits, cables, and again in the bottom as you can see there's just lots of random shit. Ceiling rows for pendant light, and another one. Ah, these I do want out for tomorrow. Because, uh, I know my stepdad can be a dick at times, but who can't be a dick? I know I'm a dick at times, especially on Facebook, so I'm going to take those to my stepdad. There's another one, another cycle light. It's lost a clip off the back. And I've actually got one of these <laughs> in my box of lights. You know me, I can't resist lights. Here we go. Look, there's a torch. You let me have. It was working. Doesn't seem to be working. I need two hands to turn that, really. <laughs> I've got another little one. Should be in my pocket. Oh. I didn't realise that plug was that shitty. Okay. I can go in the bin then. Brake caliper. I think that actually came off of. A mini moto, I think. Possibly. Same bloody thing as a, as a push bike, though. Just a box of uh, nuts and washers in there, and a few screws. Vintage light switch. Sort of a late 60s, early 70s style. Still works. Still use it. No reason why you'd have to change it unless you just want modern looking fins. Spotlight, <clears throat> it's a bit bent out of shape and dirty, but you know what I'm like, it's a light. Leave me alone. There's another one somewhere. <laughs> I think it's in that one. Yeah, yeah, it's buried in that one. There's a bicycle pedal in there. And some Random cables, lamp holder, that probably came off that fitting over there actually. <laughs> Some random screws, anything else. What the hell was that off of? No idea. <laughs> right. What did I throw in here? Just some random loose bits I think. We've got a clock. We've got, you guessed it, another light. He's had this one. Actually, I think this one was one of mine originally, to be honest. I think. I can't remember. Just a bog standard bulk headlight. And you can still get these. They're cheap as hell. And uh, you could use an LED bulb in this as well. There is room in there. So... If you want to use an LED blub in one of them, you can. Hell, a screwdriver. It's a cheapy one, but it's still a screwdriver. Four bags of screws and crap. Things we've got over here. That is a hard drive transfer cable for Xbox. Oh, and that noise means my. Uh, my uh, video's done rendering. <clears throat> Extension outlet. I think this is probably the bed box. <laughs> right, what have we got? Bags of screws. Shit loads of these. So what I could do is to make the frame for the trikes, for the axle, um, some of this. More like that length. He was going to scrap this bit, so I thought, yeah, I might come in handy. <laughs> How about that for a big old spotlight? Um, he did have two of these, but again, I didn't see the other one in there, so... Uh, I don't know. I've got bigger tin just in case I need it for the extra screws. Mm. 
pardon me. <clears throat> more bags of screws to go through. More bags of screws and um, yeah. <clears throat> ah, excuse me. There's loads of these in here. What else? Metal bike pump. It's a bit scratched up, but it does work. <clears throat> oh, here's the other spotlight that I'd actually been after for ages. <laughs> He'd had it hanging up in his workshop at the flat. For, ow, shit. It's broken. He'd had it hanging up in his workshop for I don't know how long, just never used. Made me wonder why he even had it, but there's one of them clip up ones. Um, probably got a use for that. What else have we got in here? I got something to take apart. I think the battery is leaked anyway, looking at that, but yeah. A leapfrog explorer. Hmm. Something we can take apart. A big ass floodlight. I don't actually know why I picked that up, to be honest. Um, there's another battery. Now, I couldn't remember if I have a Parkside or not. So, never know, it might even fit on one of my drills. <laughs> Who knows? A belt. Spare one just in case mine goes complete. And these dropper bottles thingies. Fast fill, I don't know. It just seems like a useful bit of kit. <sighs> Thermometer. I think these go in the lid of a barbecue. Again, it just seemed interesting. No idea what the fudge this is. I think I'll take that to Mum's tomorrow, actually, and someone might be able to shed some light on the subject. Anyone know what it is? It's got the green copper corrosion on it, so it's obviously copper. That's brass. I can see that's brass. I don't see the body as copper. I thought someone messaged me for a second there. So, yeah. I'll just pick that up because that was interesting. Shit loads of these in here. Um... Yeah, there's that flood. Uh, there's, here it is. Another little charger. I don't think I'm going to use it, although it... Because that one only does 12. Um, 12 volt adapter for something. I have got the cable for that so I can plug things in. Here we go. It's here. There is a 5 volt one here. Now, would it plug into here? It does. So maybe I've got an external charger here. Um, I don't even know he'd put this other battery charger in here. Till I looked, went and put something into the trailer myself. And there sat this one. Now, I believe they all work. But this one does 6 and 12 volt as well, so that's quite handy for me to keep hold of. Again, there's no alligator clips. Oh, one. I have to sort that out. There's a few odds and sods in the bottom of this. Ah, look. I've got one of these pullers as well. And the reason I picked this up is because uh, you can use them to get cranks off. If you hook these on just right, you can use them to pull cranks off if you haven't got, or if you can't screw the proper tool in. So that is why I grabbed that when he um, threw that in the scrap bin. I was sort of like, no, I've got a use for that. Oh yeah, I've got no idea if it's any good. Probably not now. I'm at a laptop hard drive. A Toshiba one. Uh, does that give me the size on here? No, it's an SATA one though. 
The only thing I can do is throw this into my laptop and see if it actually does anything. Although I doubt it because it's got a fucking great dent in the top there, so I think that's a dead one. But uh, as I say, you don't know until you try. The bulb in this actually looks good, but the light doesn't work. And he's no spark, so. Uh, might actually keep this little old charger. You don't know, do you, when one might come in handy? Right, bloody wood be on there, wouldn't it? Ah, it just goes on with a spade crimp there. Hmm. I don't think this one's got any on it either. For some reason, none of his chargers have. I did ask him today if he actually wished he'd uh, gone through all of this before he moved, but his idea was, at the time, as he was going to move his big workshop, he was going to sort it all out in the big workshop. But uh, considering people complained and said big workshop had to come down, uh, that didn't happen. <laughs> Camera. It's a Kodak. Um, it's a film camera, I've just realised. Well, people still like these, so I'll probably eBay that as well. Possibly, I don't know. I see the flashes up there. <laughs> That's a clever idea. It's quite a nice design. I have no idea if it works. It's a Kodak, so I know it's probably well. I'm no, for, for, you know, no specialist on photography. Hmm. But I know there's a lot of photographers out there that still like the old film cameras, so. I don't know, try it on your belly for a couple of quid. What's this? Handle for a drill. Just thought that might come in useful. A bit of piping again, just something I thought that might come in useful. I'm just gonna chuck all these out as well, so I'll grab some of them. Asus Windows 7. Chipset support DVD. And we've got whatever this thing is. It's got a spirit level on it and it's fucking cold where it's been outside. Ooh. No smooth flat surface for it to sit on. Lint. Another one I got just because it looked interesting. <laughs> uh, screws. Just a big ass floodlight, that's the only thing of interest that's left in here. Oh, pardon me. And the wooden crate I've got still at his is uh, pretty much just full of screws and things as well. Ah, this one's for lead acid batteries. So I don't know if it would be better for me to use this one to charge. This one just up there. I don't know if it would be better for me to use this one to charge them. I don't know. Mini charger. Oh, joy. Uh, probably got spiders in this somewhere then. Uh, oh, well. I'll have some lovely eight-legged friends running around my flat again, won't I? Um, I'm just looking around, yeah, I think that's it. Goodies. Uh, I don't know, what, I think I'll end up throwing that spotlight out. If I could find a pair, then I'd eBay the pair if I could get hold of the second one, but... I don't know if he's still got it or if he's already thrown that one out. 
but I know for a fact that it was a pair. Um, he's still got some more sorting out to do, so <clears throat> he's got a trailer full of stuff to go down to the dump. The hexagon key and that all still wrapped up. That missed. I'll just tip that in the front tub. <sighs> I'm definitely not sorting anything out tonight. But yeah, I definitely, I definitely wanted this one. <laughs> I want this one for a while. This is actually quite old. This thing. I just want to make sure the cable isn't damaged. Got standard BC fitting in there, bayonet cap fitting, clamp. No bulb. Well, there was a bulb in it, but I broke it. I think that was me that broke it, anyway. And if I remember rightly, this, I think, came out of a caravan we demolished for a friend of his. Friend, a friend of his was moving. Well, they're actually no longer friends, but that's um, a story I won't get into. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm pretty certain that was in the caravan. We dismantled those friends. Yeah, it was. The old uh, red and black wiring. Right. Well, I didn't get far with that today, did I? Now I got sidetracked. Oh, I've got exact same pair of these tyres. I don't know if you can actually see the brand on the side here. If we zoom in a bit, yeah. I've got a pair of those myself. I've kept them as a spare pair for my um, grey Claude Butler. <sighs> Part of me wants to sit and start sorting screws and shit, but no way. <laughs> I am actually feeling a bit tired. So, that ain't gonna happen. Oh, hello. You must put games in the top there or something. It's got a USB connector as well. Volume control. It's just like a little handheld game thing from the look of it for um, kids, young kids. I get up. Ugh, I guess I've still got my shirt off. I'm still hot. Ooh, fuck now. It must be a weird camera angle for you. Oh. Right, we're rendered up. Close that. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Open this up. Voice message? Yes, I'll listen to that in a second. I don't like listening to voice messages like that, just, you know, to conserve people's privacy and whatnot. So I don't listen to them on camera, I mean. I'll give that a listen in a minute. Um, I'm surprised Mum hasn't rung yet. And I've said that, that phone will probably ring. <laughs> uh, if not, I'll give her a ring in the morning. A message. Oh, he wants a link to my channel. Well, yes, yes, you may. Uh, open link in a new tab. Okay, 
So I've got my... Sorry, Wesley, I'll have to pause you for a second. Go on my channel. It's actually up on my Facebook page, but it might not be noticeable. I suppose it's not that noticeable if you're using a mobile phone or something, as everything is smaller. I'll just copy and paste that link there and send. There we go. Yay, it's my cousin's parents. But I suspect so-and-so is getting fed up with the selfie stick. Again, I don't feel like uh, calling out names. You could be feeling your hand, her hands around your neck soon. <laughs> I haven't changed a bit. Aged a little bit. Not by much, though, to be honest, since I last saw him. Yeah. Me and their son, who technically my half cousin or cousin once removed, however you want to pronounce it. I always just called him cousin. I couldn't be couldn't be bothered back then with all the half cousin and whatnot. And still can't, so to me he's just a cousin. Um used to be bloody best buddies back at school. Um, which is weird. Just for the simple reason, his parents were I'd say wealthier than ours, you know, they always owned their own house, owned their own fairly new cars, and they still do. And then there was my family who was just, uh, well, I suppose working class, I suppose. Dad always had a full-time job, that paid the bills, and that's just about all it did. <laughs> but to be honest, we didn't really have a need for um, a PC at home back then, you know, because when I was growing up in the 90s, we were still able to do a lot of things by walking into a shop in town. You know, nowadays you apply for a job, they'll tell you to go online. <laughs> if you want more information about an offer or something on in a shop, go online. It's all, it's all online nowadays. Um, I know they used to say, this is going on a completely different subject now, they used to say supermarkets killed off the shops in the town centre. Um, I disagree with that, just for the simple reason, I know supermarkets were, again, another American thing, not a bad thing, I actually like them myself, but they were introduced over here, what, in the 60s, I think? Late part of the 60s, early 70s, around there somewhere. And uh, even when I was growing up in the 90s, the town centre was still thriving. We had at least four fruit and veg shops when I was growing up. Um, numerous clothes shops and pet shops and you name it, we had it, even with... I think we only had the one supermarket at the time, but even with the supermarket, they were still competing. But I think it's online shopping and the fact that everything... Hey! Fuck off. Just stuck his claws right into my knee. Um, it's so easy and sometimes a lot cheaper to get things online. I mean, it's so more, much more convenient to shop online, especially... I'm not going to use that word because I don't like it, but if you have mobility problems and you can't get around very well, you know, disabled, but I really don't like that word, to be honest. Um, well, that's one of the few words you've got to describe it, that sort of thing with, but I still don't like it. But you know what I mean. Yeah, it was really convenient for them because I know someone who was diabetic and wheelchair bound is no longer with us, God rest his soul, but that's all he did. He just shopped online, you know, tele shopping. He even bought things off these um, tele shopping channels 
and whatnot. I suppose he didn't have much else to do when he's wheelchair bound. Was wheelchair bound. Anyway. Yeah, I suppose I'll shut the camera down. And uh, I could um, put this to the PC tonight and get it all rendered up ready for tomorrow. Or I can do it when I get back from Mum's. Probably won't take the camera with me this time. <sighs> Whiskers need a trim again. Uh, I think of anything else just before I turn the camera off. Nope. Yeah, well, I guess Mum's not going to ring tonight then. I was going to ring her, but it's getting a bit late now. Um, I'll ring her when I get up. You know that smell you get on your hands when um, you've handled a lot of metallic stuffers? That's what I can smell at the moment. Oh, I better put my chicken ball things in the fridge. Um, I was just letting them cool down before I put them in the fridge. I'll go do that, actually, when I turn the camera off. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you like the video, then please hit the like button. I appreciate it a, a lot. And uh, if you want to see more random videos, and feel free to hit the subscribe button. And uh, until the next video, I'll talk to you all later. Bye. Hi guys, I'm starting the vlog tonight, straight after the last one, for one simple reason. A good lesson I'm going to tack this on the end of the vlog, and I will put a little thing up Um, basically, I'm going to show you why you don't leave batteries in something you don't plan on using for a long, long time, and especially do not do it with cheap, nasty batteries. Are you ready? I've just taken the batteries out of this, and uh, that is what I've opened up. I have not touched any of that with my fingers because I can actually see and I've actually had a prod with the screwdriver it's still wet it's still wet acid so and as you can see it's actually eaten through the battery pack look at that it's actually pretty much eaten through it so uh, yeah it's this is now as they would say fucked just because they've left some cheap Max Power branded heavy duty, yeah, heavy duty, my fucking ass, um, <laughs> batteries in here. They're knackered. It's knackered the whole battery pack. Um, the contacts have survived in here. So, you know, I could. Uh, looks like it's the middle two that are connected. So I could, you know, connect a 6 volt battery to that to see if it still works. <laughs> About it, but um, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to sit here and uh, take it apart. So I just thought I'd take this on the end of the video, you know, and uh, just show you what not to do with batteries and why. Because uh, that's a good example. I actually knew it had leaked, you know, just looking at the state of that bit there. I knew that it had been leaking. I can see a fracture right there in the middle as well. So, yeah, there's only one thing I'm going to do with that. Chuck it straight in there. <laughs> anyway, bye.